Welcome, my dear university students and YouTube viewers to this chapter five continuing coverage of thermochemistry. In this video, I will teach you the first law of thermodynamics and endothermic versus exothermic. So the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. In other words, any amount of energy that a system loses must be gained by its surroundings and vice versa. And if you don't remember what a system or surroundings means, you can click on the video that I've linked to in the description below, as well as here somewhere, which is the video that preceded this one. All right? Now imagine if we had a system such as a chemical reaction, for example, that eventually transferred all of its energy to its surroundings. So if you drew a diagram of such a system, and we scientists like to draw lots of diagrams because otherwise we would be out of a job, your diagram would look something like this. We draw some line somewhere that represents the energy level at which the uh, system starts, okay? Now again, this is a process where we're talking that the system is losing all of its energy as it's expelling that energy to its surroundings. So what happens when we eventually proceed to the final energy level of that system? Well, yeah, it's going to be at a lower level. So the energy level is going to go down as all of that system expels its energy out and into the surroundings. So the final energy level is at a lower level than the initial. Make sense? Now, the difference between these two levels represents the energy that is gained by the surroundings. That is the energy that is lost by the system as it expels that energy into the surroundings. We can call that delta E or change in energy. Now, I want you to imagine the opposite now. What if we had a system that absorbed energy from its surroundings? So its surroundings are hot or something, and the surroundings are pushing energy into the system. Now, if you drew a diagram depicting that, it would look something like this. You start at some level that we will call the initial energy level of the system, whatever that happens to be. Now, as energy starts to go into the system from the surroundings, the internal energy of the system is going to go up, right? Because the system is absorbing that energy, which means that when it's all over at least whatever chemical reaction or process we're talking about, the system's internal energy ends up at some new higher level that's higher up than it initially was, right? Now, in this case, again, the difference between the two would be the energy gained by the system. So in this case, the system gained energy by taking it from the surroundings. As before, the difference between those two energy levels would be the delta E or change in energy. We see then that the system's total change in energy or delta E is equal to its final energy level, whatever that is, minus its initial energy level. Let's take this information and move it up top. Again then, if the system absorbs energy, gains energy from its surroundings, then its energy level goes up. And as we saw before, if it does the opposite, if it expels energy out of itself into its surroundings, then it goes down. And what would the signs of the delta E's here be? Well, as you can well imagine, the delta E for the case down here where the system expels energy into the surroundings is negative. While the delta E of the case up here where the system absorbs energy from the surroundings is positive. Again then, when a system releases energy into its surroundings, delta E is negative. That's what we have down here. When a system absorbs energy from its surroundings, delta E is positive as we have up here. Please remember then that energy is always transferred as either heat, abbreviated with the letter Q, work, abbreviated with the letter W, or both. Thus, a system's change in energy, or delta E, can also be described as Q plus W, heat plus work, where delta E is the change in the system's total energy state from the beginning of the process to the end, W is equal to work, and Q is an abbreviation for heat. And as I stated in an earlier video, you might ask, why in the world do we use the letter Q for heat instead of the letter H? The reason is because the letter H is an abbreviation for something called enthalpy that we will talk about later. You might ask, well, why don't we use the letter E for enthalpy? Because the letter E is used for energy. So all of this is the fault of energy. Energy stole the E, which left enthalpy to have an H, which left heat to have a Q, which is why I sometimes jokingly call heat Queet. To sum up then, in any chemical or physical process, if you have a positive Q, the system is gaining heat from the surroundings. If you have a negative Q, the system is losing heat to the surroundings. Similarly, if you have a positive W or work, then the surroundings are doing work on your system. Whereas if you have a negative work, then the system is doing work on the surroundings. 
And delta E, of course, is the sum of the two, Q plus W. Ergo, a positive delta E implies that the system has a net energy gain, while a negative delta E implies that the system has a net energy loss. And as it turns out, we have beautiful terms for both of these, endothermic and exothermic. As it turns out, and this is very important to remember, when Q is negative, you have an exothermic reaction. That's the word that we use for a delta E negative scenario. In an exothermic reaction, the system releases energy into its surroundings. Exothermic reactions or processes, by the way, feel hot if you're standing nearby. So the combustion of gasoline, for example, is an exothermic chemical reaction. And you can tell because if you're standing nearby, you can feel the heat ebbing off of it, which means that that system, that chemical reaction, is giving heat off to its surroundings. Ergo, it is exothermic. The opposite is called endothermic. If you have a Q that is positive, your process or reaction is endothermic. That's a case where the system absorbs energy from its surroundings. Endothermic reactions or processes feel cold if you're standing nearby. As an example, you put ice in your hand and watch it start to melt. That is not a chemical reaction, it's a physical change, but does it feel hot or cold? Yeah, it feels cold, which means what? It means it's endothermic. It's endothermic because the system, the ice, is sucking heat energy out of your hand and using that heat energy transferred to its water molecules to get them to wiggle and move apart, converting from a solid frozen ice into a liquid, liquid water. Let's take a look then at a great lecture problem. I want you to please classify each of the following changes as being exothermic or endothermic from your own personal experience. Now, I'm not going to show you the answers, but I invite you to try these on your own. Then I want you to consider the following, which you probably haven't personally experienced. The formation of sodium chloride from sodium metal and chlorine gas and the chemical reaction of thermite, compressed aluminum and iron, doing a really cool chemical reaction. For both of these, I invite you to watch these YouTube links that I'm going to put somewhere up here and or in the description beneath this video. They take you to very exciting and cool YouTube videos that I'm not going to show here because I don't want to get sued. Let's go on to another lecture problem then from my university students, homework set. Consider the following diagram and then please answer these questions. First, does this diagram represent an increase or a decrease in the internal energy of the system? Next, what sign is given to the delta E for this process? And last, if there is no work associated with this process, is it exothermic or endothermic? All right, here's the answer, letter A. Does the diagram represent an increase or decrease in the internal energy of the system? Well, the system is the reactants undergoing a chemical reaction to convert to products. Because it's going uphill, it represents an increase because uphill is an increase. How about option B? What sign is given to a delta E for this process? Well, again, because it's an increase, it is a positive sign. And is that an exothermic or endothermic process? Yeah, when you have a positive sign for delta E, it is endothermic which means that if you are nearby this system would be absorbing heat energy from its surroundings so it would feel cold as the reactants moved toward products